Hello and welcome to Meriwether Knitting. My name is Gabriella and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany where I'm so excited to share with you my knitting and crafting and inspiration of the last week. I hope you'll get cozy, grab something to drink, maybe grab something to work on. Today I have some strawberry cheesecake tea, which is a bit seasonally inappropriate, but I saw that box and I just knew I wanted a cup of this tea today. So that's what I'm drinking in my beautiful little Baroque Rococo teacup. And the tea color, I don't think you can see it, but it's like the most beautiful, rich, dark, kind of raspberry color, like dark reddish pink. It's very beautiful. But this week I haven't done, I feel like I haven't done a ton of knitting this week, but I have a very special project, very special finished object, rather, to share with you. And if you've been watching this podcast for a while, it's already going to be clear. You're already going to have spotted it, maybe. Um, if you're new, you're going to hear all about it right now. This is the last time I'm going to really be able to talk about this project. And that is this one that I'm wearing right here, my Elizabeth the First. This pullover has been such a joy to knit. I'm so pleased with it. It's been a long time coming. I've worked on this project for, yeah, the better part of the year, I think. It definitely is not a project that needs to take as long as it did for me, but I enjoyed taking it slow with the sweater and knitting things in between as I knit this one. I've never knit a sweater at this tight of a gauge before. It was the first time for me that I've knit a sweater, you know, with, I think I, I used a size US 2 needles for these, for the sweater. And um, I had never knit a sweater at that gauge before. So that was the first time for me in that regard. And it was just such a joyful, amazing process, such an amazing learning experience. It was just so much fun. So I wanna show it to you, I wanna stand up. I think, I don't know if you'll be able to see it well. I'm definitely going to take photos with it and share them on Instagram if you're on Instagram. Um, but, and also I'll put post them on Ravelry too. So if you're on Ravelry, you can see them there. And probably also on my on my blog because <laughs> I'm just so proud of this pro uh, project. But I'm gonna stand up so you can see. It's kind of a little, I don't know if you can see well. It's kind of a little awkward, but here it is in its glory. The Elizabeth the First, I feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm just so happy with how it looks. Look at how beautiful the shape is. It's got this beautiful hourglass shape, which I think is kind of one of the main features of this pattern. And it has this kind of curved hemline here, which I think is very flattering and really beautiful and unusual, but such a like a really beautiful and lovely element. Um, the sleeves are of course also big features, these kind of dramatic sleeves that also are curved, just like the hemline here boat neck and of course this dramatic V cable pattern design um, which is really like kind of the main feature but it's such a beautiful elegant sweater um, while also being just really like unusual and really special and I think it reminds me so much like of, of the medieval period it's a renaissance sweater it's based of course on Elizabeth the first Queen Elizabeth the first but this colorway just combined with these sleeves and the shape really remind me of just like the medieval period, like medieval times. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna sit down now and talk to you about it. But it's, isn't that beautiful? Isn't it so beautiful? I'm so like, I'm so over the moon happy with this sweater. I could not be more pleased with it. I think it's so stunning and so just special. Everything about it is so special. I've never had a garment like this one before um, for so many reasons but I'll start with all the kind of the facts the like figures and then I'll go on to a little bit of my experience knitting it um, because like I said this is kind of the last time I'm gonna be able to talk about it and if you're interested in knitting this sweater then maybe you'll be you'll want to hear about someone's experience in that process recently I've loved to look on YouTube and see if people have knit a pattern or a project that I've knit or that I want to knit actually and I love to hear about their experience and the yarn they used and just all their thoughts on it. So yeah, this is the Elizabeth the First by Alice Starmore from Alice and Jane Starmore's book, Tudor Roses. Tudor Roses book is a book which is now a few years old. It, there was there were two editions, an older edition in the 90s and a newer one I think that was published in 2013. I could be wrong. But the, this newer version is just full of stunning, gorgeous, 
designs all inspired by women of the Tudor dynasty. And Alice Starmore has been, I think, an icon in the knitting world for, yeah, a long time. And I think each one of these designs is just so special and so beautiful in so many ways. I am someone who really loves history and who has been a big, yeah, big fan of the Tudor women and the Tudor dynasty for a long time, since I was like a teenager. I, I loved to read up on the Tudor period, read historical fiction books, watch movies, but also watch documentaries and also read biographies about the women in this period and in this, you know, in the Tudor dynasty, because there were so many incredible, amazing women um, who did amazing things. And one of which was Elizabeth I, Queen Elizabeth I, Gloriana. And I knew when I saw this design that I wanted to knit it. Um, one, because I feel like her character, who she was, was just so inspiring to me, but also the design itself just looked so beautiful. And so after choosing that design, I chose yarn for it. And I was very graciously provided this yarn in collaboration with Virtual Yarns, which is the Starmore Yarn Company. And this yarn is just perfect for these designs. It was used in the designs and it was like, she's perfectly made for each one of these designs and so it was a real privilege to receive that yarn from them and to be able to use it in knitting up my very own Elizabeth I. And I chose this colorway which is the colorway Macare which is a very beautiful kind of rustic green colorway, green based colorway but um, as you can see if I show you up close it's full of all kinds of beautiful different elements different shades of purples and reds and um, even golden shades. There are just so many beautiful dimensions to this yarn. It's so multi-dimensional and so stunning. So it's a really special colorway and um, I think it just knits up so beautifully. And because of that, you have multi-dimensional it is, it is perfect for kind of matching with all kinds of clothes. When I wear this sweater, I feel like it's going to fit and match all kinds of different clothes that I have in different, you know, pants or skirts or dresses. I can just put it on top and it's going to color, like, color wise really go with different things and really create a look. I think um, I'm really, really happy with the colorway choice. And the Macare is an ecosystem, a kind of landscape that exists, I think, only and exclusively on, in Scotland and Ireland or on the Isles. I don't know if it's only like on Shetland or if think I think it's just kind of in that area geographically that it exists exclusively there and it looks so beautiful. I looked at photos and um, kind of the plant life, the flora and fauna that live there are just so beautiful and I thought it was so inspiring to knit this design in that colorway and it's just such a natural beautiful rich colorway and I couldn't be more happy with that choice either. Now that I have it I think it looks it adds such a, a unique kind of vibe to this sweater. I really like how it kind of tones it down a little bit because it is very regal this this design it's very regal it has these like dramatic lines these very feminine shapes from the neckline to the hemline to the sleeves to the waist shaping which is like dramatic hourglass um even this v i feel like it's all very feminine and it also with, with this colorway i think it kind of tones it down and makes it a little bit more a little bit more earthy which I really like. I like that kind of combination with this kind of rustic earthiness and that just dramatic, over the top, almost just glamorous femininity. It's almost, almost theatrical. It's really so beautiful and so special. I love to have pieces in my wardrobe that give me kind of, I don't know, some kind of a flavor or a taste or a story and this definitely gives that to me on many different levels. Nick always like makes fun of me and tells me that I like to like dress up in different costumes with kind of my style. And I would say I have a pretty neutral style, but there are just a few pieces that I would say do do that. You know, like an amazing pair of shoes, um, something a little bit over the top and a little bit special um, added into your wardrobe can really like just shape the whole look. And um, this piece is just one of those that I know I'm gonna put on all the time when I want this specific flavor in this story and it's very autumnal, it's perfect for this time of year. I can feel myself, see myself wearing it though through all autumn, winter and spring because, because of this kind of 
chameleon like shape-shifting colorway it can kind of fit into all of those seasons right now it fits like really well into this October almost November you know color scheme in nature but I know when winter comes I feel like the, those kind of colors will be drawn out a little bit the cooler tones and the more sleeping earth tones and then in spring I can feel those greens being brought out of it I don't know it just seems like such a neutral for me and yeah, I can't say loud enough or often enough how happy I am with the colorway and happy I am with this pattern. It's just so, so lovely and so beautiful. So, as I said before, it does not need to take as long as it took for me. It took me quite a few months to knit this sweater because I knit lots of things in between and I just took it slow um, knitting this pattern. I just had no rush. I was knitting, you know, lots of other projects, finished lots of other projects, finished a couple of other sweater, little mini sweaters and a sweater for me in between. Um, the quick knits. But it could take you, it could, it could be a really quick knit. It's just also very simple, very intuitive. Um, if you know how to knit into purl, you can knit this pattern. If you've never cabled before, this would be a wonderful project to try for your first cable project. Um, I really recommend this pattern for anyone if you're intrigued by the same kind of design or style that I am. And honestly, if you change the colorway, if you chose a different colorway, you could knit this and it would give you a totally different vibe too, I feel like. Because I, I think the original kind of samples that are shown on the website and in the book are knit in, I think, golden plover. I'll show pictures. One of them is a golden, rich, beautiful color, which I think this is so Elizabethan and so beautiful and so regal. And this colorway, I would also maybe one day love to knit one of these out of this colorway because I think it's gorgeous. Um, and I think the other one is, is more of a kind of a, a greeny, soft bluish kind of pebbly color. I'm not sure. I'll put photos of those, of course, here so you can see them. Um, but those give, that gives you more of this very subtle, kind of, kind of watery, beautiful, water queen kind of a feeling. And so if you change the colorway, it gives this design a totally different life and a totally different flavor, which is so exciting. If I were to knit this again, I think I wouldn't change a single thing about it. Honestly, I wouldn't change anything about this pattern or about my process or anything. Um, I really love the feel of this yarn because it is very, it's rustic and very warm, but it's, and it has like, it has toothiness to it a little bit, but it's not in any way scratchy, not in any way itchy. It's quite soft. Um, so it's really a, a beautiful, I, I forget the blend of wools that this is. I don't know exactly, but it's it's very soft at the same time as being rustic, which I think is unusual and something really special because of the gauge that this is knit at and because um, of the yarn, which does feel like it has a little bit of a rustic element to it. At least I'm quite sure that this piece is going to last me a long time and maybe one that I could even pass on to my daughter one day. One thing I would maybe do one day, but I don't know, I really love this these cables here. I might knit one without the cables even, just because the shaping is so beautiful and I feel like just this sweater would also be nice like alone, like without any cabling on it if I just wasn't in the mood for cables but wanted this kind of designer shape and these sleeves and this body, you know, the hourglass. I, I might knit it that way too, um, just plain. But I really love the cables. I really love this V and it's on the back, it's the same. Um, which, yeah, I won't show you now. I'll post things so you know, in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to see details, you can. And oh yeah, this is being knit and was knit for the Tudor Rose Knit Along, which is a knit along that began at the beginning of 2021 and ran and is running all the way through the year of 2021. And I've had the joy of hosting this along with two other podcasters as well, Bella of 100 Acre of Wool and Sophie of Becca Creations. Um, and it's just so so special to have been a part of this and to be a part of this knit along um, and to just knit with others who enjoy these patterns and enjoy the history and the whole process. So many amazing knitters and now I feel like online kind of friends, Instagram friends or Ravelry friends have knit this with us and I've loved seeing the finished objects. I've loved seeing um, the finished products that have come out of this knit along and yeah, it's just amazing and so beautiful. Oh my gosh. There are, have been a couple of other Elizabeth I that just look so beautiful and in different colors that look amazing. So if you are interested, you can look on Ravelry or also on Instagram under the hashtag Tudor Rose Cal 
hashtag and you can see some of those. I know there have been also um, some Jane Seymour designs and like it's just gorgeous sweaters which I definitely recommend taking a peek at if you're interested in the Tudor Rose book. Um, I know that Bella is I think getting close approaching the end of her Anne Boleyn sweater which is looking impeccable as well just gorgeous. Um, the colorway she chose are just breathtaking. So it's really exciting and really special and this has just been a lovely, lovely process. So next, I'm gonna show you my works in progress. Like I said, I have had very little knitting this week. I haven't done that very much. I have two projects to share with you. The first one is going to be, actually, I don't think I'm even gonna show it to you. I think I'm just gonna tell you about it because it's still a mystery and it's the Mystery Knit Along, the Shawlography pattern by Stephen West which I'm knitting right now, and it's a lot of fun. But let me be honest with you, I've knit very little in the last week on this pattern. Um, I'm not even quite done with Clue 1. I have like a couple more, yeah, if you know the last part of Clue 1, I have a couple more of those things to do, and then it's over for me with Clue 1. And I really like this pattern. I really love the yarn. It's I'm knitting it with acrylic yarn, and um, I'm knitting it in Christmas colors, which is a lot of fun. But it just hasn't called to me this week. For some reason, I loved, loved, loved watching other people's um, shawlographies grow on Instagram and on YouTube as well when people post updates. I feel like it's just, right now, it's just not the moment for me. I, it's gonna come. I feel like the mojo for this project is just gonna, gonna come to me in the next few weeks. Maybe when Advent hits even at that point, I don't know. But for me, this is a long-term thing too. I don't mind. It's like a a, like a low stakes kind of a knit for me because I hadn't planned on it and I just have this acrylic yarn and it's Christmas so it's kind of just this fun joyful like little knit for me and I'm really enjoying it when I'm knitting it but I'm also not forcing it for me myself it's not a race I'm embracing my own pace as Stephen West very graciously always reminds us on his videos which is so sweet um yeah I think probably around Advent I'm gonna get into it because of the Christmas colors and I've already thought you know if by like January 1st, the mojo hasn't hit. I'm gonna pack up this beautiful yarn. I'm gonna put it away for next Christmas. That sounds pretty radical and pretty crazy, but it's just, I've never had really like an intentionally Christmas or holiday knit before. And um, I think it's a really fun idea to just work on it around Christmas time. And then if I don't even finish it, like just to bring it out again next year, I don't know. I don't know, that might be a little, a little weird, but I think if I'm like conscious about that and know, okay, that's gonna be my, yeah, my Christmas thing, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm gonna need to knit it because right now it's taking me, it's going very slowly, so we'll see. But yeah, that's my shawlography. I'll show it to you when I have a little bit more progress. Um, and right now we're still in the midst of the mystery. I think by the time you watch this, the mystery will be released completely. And um, I don't know at what point you can then start to show it openly. At what point it's not any more a mystery. I had kind of spoiled for myself the first two clues and clue three, I thought, I'm gonna keep this a secret. I'm gonna not spoil myself. I'm gonna wait. And then I went on Instagram and it showed up, right? Like, poop, it just showed up. So then I was like, okay, I saw clue three. I give up the like mystery side of things, which is totally okay. I don't really mind at all. Um, yeah, I should have done that when I like had already knit. If I had already knit up to that point, would have probably been a little smarter and a little bit better, but I don't know. Anyway, that's my shawlography. The other little project I have in the needles that I've been working on this week is my Ova Windling Mini sweater by Enya Odegaard or Aftenstrick. And I'm knitting it in um, a Rauma yarn, Rauma, beautiful Rauma yarn. And um, yeah, I finished the little yoke. I'm just on the body now, I've separated for the sleeves. It's this beautiful little sweater I'm knitting for my daughter, Esmeralda. The Rauma colorways, I think they're similar to the ones in the pattern. I don't know if it even calls for specific colors in the pattern or not. I think I said before that it's the exact colors that are in the pattern. I don't know if it even tells you the exact colors, colorways, but I went and I tried to copy them or something, I'm not sure. But it's this beautiful kind of a, I don't know if you can tell, this kind of a, grayish, beigeish, taupeish color, very natural color, um, with this green and then this beautiful brown. So it's just these three colorways and it's a lovely little yoke. I think it's going to be so sweet on her. This color work does not look very good. 
it wasn't it was kind of fail i feel like i've done way better color work it looks very bunchy and very just not beautifully uniform um i was knitting on very small a very small cord for a long time and so i overcompensated so it's way like loose it's way the gauge is way loose it's not too tight which i think is okay because i think it'll fix itself up a little bit in blocking we'll see but it definitely looks a little rough at the moment here but it's okay i really think it's so cute and so precious and at the beginning i wasn't sure if these were little like paw prints or footprints in the snow or if they were birds but I'm very sure now that they are birds little little birds flying between these gorgeous branches and this is going to be such a special sweater for her and one that she'll wear all the time it's nice and warm it'll be nice and cozy and it's just going to be so special so I really am so happy about this project now I'm just knitting the body and then I have the sleeves and then it's done and so I've got in it yeah a certain amount of centimeters and then it's over which I don't know how long that's going to take me it depends on how in the mood I am for stockinette sometimes it's just stockinette season and stockinette like is the thing for me and I only want stockinette I only want like knit stitch knit stitch knit stitch but then there are other times where I am so bored by stockinette and I need some interest I need some texture or I need some something some color or something but you know when we're in the car or when I'm in conversation, it's always nice to have a little stock in it project to go to. Now I chose the two year old size for this pattern. Esmeralda is 19 months old, so she's a little bit older, you know, a little bit more than one and a half. Um, I thought it's better that she has something that fits her for a long time than if she has something too small or something she grows out of quickly. So I, I chose the two year old size and I did not gauge swatch for this, um, also because I think Having a children's sweater, it's kind of like, if it's a little bit big, if it's a little bit small, we can make it work, especially if I'm knitting it a size bigger than her size. I feel like if it were to be a little bit too small, it would be okay. I could knit a little longer, um, but if it were to be a little bit too big, then she can grow into it. And I think it is a little bit big because I tried this yoke on her and it just looks massive. And most of her clothes that she wears right now are kind of like two-year-old clothes. Like the, she wears like 18 months to 24 month size clothes and the the 24 month or like the two year old clothes are a little bit, tiny bit long and a tiny bit big, but not very much. And this was like massively big on her. Um, so I think my gauge is loose, which I'll tell you why I think that is in a moment. Um, I mean, yeah, it's also color work, which can change things up. And I don't have that much color work experience, but she, um, but if, if this is too big for her, it's very okay because she'll wear it then next year. I can always roll up the sleeves only thing I'm not so sure about is if I'm going to lengthen the body and the sleeves. I have enough yarn. I have an extra whole extra little ball of this main color. So I could do that. I'm not sure though if I will. It kind of depends. I think I'll evaluate when I get to that point point, see how long it is because if it is like extra big and she will get another year or two out of it then I do want to lengthen it. I can always lengthen it then you know after the fact as well. But I think the reason why my gauge is a little bit different in this project it feels different than usual is because I'm knitting it completely in continental style um obviously with color work I knit it with both hands like English and continental at the same time but um I am knitting the rest of this sweater completely in continental which is for me not natural not a natural state a very non-natural situation for me very like out of my comfort zone actually I'm just an English knitter I'm trying to be kind of expand my horizons a little bit to save my arms and to save my tendons and to give them a rest and to not get like a real repetitive repetitive stress injury because I've previously talked a little bit about that and how I've kind of struggled with the beginnings of a repetitive stress stress injury and not wanting to exacerbate it and not wanting to let it develop into something really severe. So I've taken that seriously the last couple of months and because I was gone for a few weeks, I didn't talk about it very much, but I had a few days where I just didn't knit, a few, you know, times where I just did other things and, and crafted in different ways and avoided knitting in order to kind of let that muscle or that tendon or whatever it is just rest and not be irritated. And um, it's helped a lot. I have very minimal discomfort. Another thing I've been doing like very consciously is knitting with proper posture. Um, if I catch myself in any way slumping, slouching or like 
laying down. Like I can't lay down in it. I used to like love to like lay down in it and in all kinds of positions, but I can't do that anymore. I really sit up straight and I knit with my arms, like my shoulder is back and my elbows tucked in. That's like so important having my elbows tucked in right beside my body and knitting with my hands kind of down in my lap. Also a suggestion I received from a comment, which was so helpful is to not rest my arms on anything. Um, I don't do that at all, which is really good. And another amazing suggestion I got, which I'm still learning about, is trying to learn Norwegian knitting, and Norwegian style knitting. And that's something I'm still in the process of, but I think that's going to be very helpful as well. I think also in kind of incorporating different styles of knitting and styles of movement into your kind of knitting, the stitches that you knit can help a lot. Um, just very, very, the, the muscles and the tendons that are used while you knit. So that's why, I'm trying to have a project which is only continental to give my hands and my arms a break. So funny though, yesterday, because I was holding my knitting up like this a little bit too much with my continental, I started getting wrist discomfort in my left wrist. So I think a little bit of discomfort is okay, that's not a problem, but like I was like, oh my gosh, what if I end up with both arms like <laughs> out of practice, they can't like knit. It's not gonna happen, they both are very fine. But I took a break and I did some stretching and it was okay. But um, proper posture is very important and proper alignment I think is the biggest key I found for avoiding that repetitive stress and then ferrying it. So keeping this project as my continental project and then letting myself knit English and other projects um, I think is going to be a good kind of my game plan for now. We'll see if that works and how it works, but yeah, that kind of affects my gauge and my knitting and just in general, my gauge looks a little bit uneven on this project. I think it's not terrible, terrible, but it looks a little bit uneven and a little bit, yeah, just not as consistent. With Continental, it takes me a lot longer <laughs> to knit just because the muscle memory isn't quite there and it's just not my natural way. It's not my like nature to knit Continental, um, even if it's okay, it kind of like works. It feels so awkward. Yeah, it still goes pretty fast, I feel like, but it's definitely slower than English for me. So, anyway, that's my Overwintering Mini, this fun little project, and this one I've just, this one has been drawing me in. This one's been calling my name, especially when I was finishing the yoke. Um, now it still is, but I don't know, now that it's just stuck in it, it might be a little bit less, but just everything about this rustic yarn, this cute little color palette that is in this design, feels perfect for this time of year and just is kind of exactly what I've been wanting to work on. So it's been calling my name and I've really been enjoying knitting it, um, knitting on it. We'll see how far I get next week if I cast on something new. I have a feeling that I'm gonna just get casting on pretty quickly a couple of projects after having cast off this beautiful Elizabeth I because yeah, there are other things that I'm really excited to knit and I feel like I've evolved a bit and I'm not anymore really a monogamous knitter at heart at this stage of my knitting life. I feel like there have been other stages where I've been super monogamous, where I've just loved having one project, knitting it to completion, casting off, getting to knit something new, and then repeating that process. But lately I felt, I don't know, maybe it is this kind of knitting community and the knitting world culture that has been kind of infected me a little bit, but I really like having a couple of different projects on the needles and I like having the freedom to cast something new on when I want to. It's just something I really like right now and it's not, yeah, I, it's not something I used to enjoy. It used to kind of stress me out a little bit to have more than one or more than two or three projects on the needles. But now I'm okay with letting certain things rest and letting other things, yeah, just have their, their time and their place and be worked on. And so I'm gonna let myself cast on something fresh, maybe even two things, we'll see. I'm really excited to share with you, whatever it is. That's all I have to share with you knitting-wise. It's not very much, although it is a big deal with the sweater. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much for your response to my previous video and my Calville shawl, which is my first design. Um, I kind of gave a sneak peek of that design in my last video and it meant so much to me to receive like such kind and encouraging words because you know it's like when it's your first thing you've ever made your like designed yourself and put together yourself and you've written like I've written a pattern for it and I started with this kind of like 
prototype where I tested out stitches. It just, it was a long process for me um, to hear such encouraging words and that other people thought it was beautiful and liked it and liked the story behind it. It just meant the world to me. So thank you, thank you so, so much. I can't wait to have it finished um, and ready to release into the world. I, yeah, it's just really special to me. So thank you. I'm gonna go and um, make some lunch. There's apple butter cooking in the kitchen. We've made huge batches of apple butter um, because we got so many apples from our neighbor's, neighbor's apple tree, which is just so special. But it just smells amazing in this apartment right now. Like apple pie spice, just like apple pie because of the apples, but the spices that I put in there just make this whole place smell so good. So we're gonna go mix it and see how it's coming and probably has a few hours left that it needs to just simmer and sit there, but it's gonna be so delicious when it's done. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week, a wonderful weekend if you're watching this on the weekend. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you have an amazing time with lots of wonderful knitting. I can't wait to see you again soon for more knitting chat. Until then, I hope you take care. Bye.